All right, hey everybody, Dr. Hagmeyer here, and if this is your first time to my YouTube channel, I just want to say welcome, glad to have you here. Uh, today we're talking about thyroid nodules, and uh, the reason we're talking about thyroid nodules is perhaps uh, the last time you visited your doctor's office, uh, you ended up where your doctor uh, determined that you have one or more thyroid nodules. And if you're like most people, that news probably came to you as being pretty scary. A lot of times doctors really don't explain what that means. And so just to help you understand that a little bit better, I, I want to go over several things related to thyroid nodules, okay? So number one, uh, for like a lot of people, the thoughts of cancer uh, obviously race through the mind. The thoughts of having the thyroid, having uh, have that removed, races through your mind. Well, the good news here is that the vast majority, over 95% of thyroid nodules are not cancerous, right? So that doesn't mean you should take this news lightly, however. There can, uh, without a doubt, be some very serious consequences that I want you to be aware of, okay? So what do we need to know about thyroid nodules? Well, in today's video, I wanna share with you not only some of the symptoms that thyroid nodules can cause, but I also wanna share with you five reasons when you need to be concerned about those thyroid nodules. And I also wanna to talk to you about a few thyroid blood markers that you need to have done, even if your general practitioner, your GP, your endocrinologist has not tested you for them. Again. So again, thyroid nodules are common, and it's also known that as you get older, the incidence of thyroid nodules increases, and so does the potential for the diagnosis of Graves' disease and Hashimoto's disease. The other thing about nodules uh, is that they can be solid lumps or they can be fluid-filled lumps, and if they get big enough, sometimes you can actually feel them in the neck, or sometimes they'll be picked up by uh, perhaps the, the dentist. Uh, in fact, I just had that happen with a lady last week. She had gone in for a routine visit, dental cleaning, and her dentist had noticed that she had lumps on her thyroid gland. Sure enough, it came back. She had Hashimoto's disease. Okay, But coming back to the nodules here, and, and obviously we'll talk a little bit more about uh, Hashimoto's here in just a moment, but again, coming back, if they're fluid-filled, this can be what's called or referred to as a thyroid cyst. And again, what I want you to know is that the majority of times these are almost always benign. Most of the time, thyroid nodules by themselves do not cause signs or symptoms. However, if these nodules begin to produce additional thyroxin, which is um, T4 thyroid hormone, this is one of the primary hormones that your thyroid gland will make, then of course, you can have uh, various symptoms associated with that. The other thing that I'm always very uh, aware of and I'm on high alert for, especially when there's nodules and there's symptoms, is the possibility uh, for an autoimmune disease. So if a nodule is present or detected and you have various symptoms like weight loss, you have increased perspiration, you're sweating all the time, maybe you're um, experiencing nervousness and tremors, maybe you find yourself on edge and irritability, perhaps you notice that your heartbeat uh, feels irregular or it feels like you have a rapid heart rate, maybe you're losing your hair or you can't sleep at night, all right, you're feeling hot when everyone else is comfortable then this is definitely a concern. And these symptoms could point to an autoimmune disease that's damaging your thyroid. Other than that, what else should you be concerned about as it relates to thyroid nodules? Well, like I mentioned just a moment ago, most of the time these nodules are not cancerous. However, when it comes to surgery, some doctors, they like removing things. And in cases where there are multiple nodules, some surgeons will suggest removing the entire thyroid gland because it's a whole lot easier to remove the entire gland rather than remove individual nodules, you know, throughout the, the gland itself. And unfortunately, this can be a huge problem because of the proximity that the thyroid gland has to the parathyroid gland. Um, often, by removing the thyroid gland, the parathyroid gland, which regulates your calcium levels and, um, you know, regulates a lot of different bodily functions, can obviously be damaged. And now you'll be dealing with all the potential symptoms that come along with that. So things like osteoporosis, ongoing joint pain, muscle weakness, uh, numbness or tingling in the fingers, uh, the lips, uh, perhaps high blood pressure. And again, just many other issues that are tied into both removing the thyroid and removing the parathyroid or damage to those parathyroid glands. In my opinion, there's really only a few situations that should be recommended or considered when removing a thyroid nodule or even removing the, the thyroid itself. So we'll talk about those. So the most obvious one is when the thyroid nodule is cancerous, right? You go in, your doctor detects this nodule, uh, maybe they do uh, an ultrasound. On the ultrasound, 
they detect um, you know some concern they do what's called a fine needle aspiration fine needle aspiration comes back or an FNA and it comes back where there's pop problems obviously if, if the nodule is malignant then this would be the most justifiable reason to have uh, the thyroid removed fortunately only five percent of nodules are malignant the second reason might uh, you might consider having your thyroid removed is when the thyroid nodule is shifting or compressing the structures of the neck, such as pushing the esophagus, pushing the trachea, or pushing the larynx to the side. Sometimes when the nodule has gotten so big, it can shift the larynx or your voice box. And this would cause inflammation uh, in, the, in, the, in the larynx. It might change your voice. Uh, you might have difficulty with speaking. You may find yourself always hoarse. Um, and also, the obvious is you may have pain in your neck. Right? If the nodule or the nodules shift the trachea, uh, to the side. You can experience difficulty with swallowing or even breathing. So just be on the lookout for some of these symptoms as well. Reason number three, someone might consider having their thyroid gland removed. Sometimes thyroid nodules begin producing excess thyroid hormone. And if this happens, uh, you'll begin to notice symptoms of hyperthyroidism. All right, These will be symptoms such as weight loss, irritability, heart palpitations, anxiety, panic attacks, sleeping disturbances like insomnia, um, these would be the symptoms of what's called hyperthyroidism, right? Too much thyroid hormone being produced in the body. And if this is happening, a course of what's known as radioactive iodine, or RAI for short, is usually recommended in the hopes that the radioactive iodine treatment will kill a portion of the thyroid, reducing all this extra thyroid hormone levels in hyperthyroidism. The last thing I, I want to cover in today's video uh, are some of the thyroid markers that you should have done if nodules are identified, and perhaps you know you went again to your doctor and the doctor did not run these tests. Very, very important because these tests could be uh, critical factors um, that identify whether or not you're dealing with an autoimmune disease. And if so, even if you have your thyroid gland removed, that's not going to address the potential damage that the immune system now can, can cause on other tissues of your body. So the test that I want you to be aware of, there's a couple of them. One of them is called TSI antibodies, right? TSI. Um, the other one is TPO antibodies. And the other one is TSH receptor antibodies, okay? Very, very important that you have these done and you have these markers. Um, you know, you ask your doctor to run these tests. If not, I encourage you to insist that they're done because, again, if you don't run these, you could be missing out on an autoimmune disease being the, the causative problem behind all of this, right? And a lot of suffering that goes alongside with it. So in closing, if you have one or more thyroid nodules, remember that the vast majority are benign and they're non-cancerous. So that's the good news. And if it turns out that you do have an autoimmune disease, you'll need to work with a doctor who can identify what your autoimmune triggers are. Otherwise, in 10 years from now, like I said earlier, what might now be Graves' disease or Hashimoto's disease, 10 years down the road becomes things like lupus and celiac disease and rheumatoid arthritis and really any of the other 100 different kinds of autoimmune diseases that are out there. We know that when a person is diagnosed with one autoimmune disease, within a 10-year period of time, they're most likely going to be diagnosed with another one. Problem number two, not problem number two, point number two that I want to um, want you to remember is that when it comes to surgery, always, always, always get a second opinion. Once you have your thyroid gland removed, there's really no going back. And in life as you know it is never going to be the same. At any given point in time, you're going to be over-medicated or under-medicated with thyroid replacement. Um, you also become, of course, permanently hypothyroid once that gland is taken out. So again, uh, having that thyroid removed uh, creates and presents itself with a variety of other treatment challenges. After surgery, many people are told that it's just a matter of taking thyroid replacement and you're going to feel fine. Unfortunately, this never happens, right? Very, very few people ever feel fine, and most of them don't have the outcome that they were promised. Weight gain, brain fog, depression, hair loss, again, all those symptoms of hypothyroidism or hypo hyperthyroidism are possible because at any given time, again, you're going to be either over-medicated or under-medicated, all right? So again, uh, part of this stems from the fact that if the root cause or the initial problem is never identified, these are the kinds of problems that you end up with down the road. Now, when it comes to surgery, realize that different doctors have different approaches. Some doctors like surgery and performing operations, and some tend to be more conservative, okay, and they prefer not to remove the entire gland. Again, this is going to be based on the surgical skill set that your surgeon has. They can be removed 
just a, uh, just a nodule, or they can take a more conservative approach. All right. Another common uh, concern that people have when it comes to the complications of thyroid surgery is, of course, damage to the laryngeal nerve. Now, this is the nerve that controls your vocal cords. So again, discuss these concerns with the surgeons that you speak with and consult with. And of course, express your ultimate desire to keep and preserve as much of your thyroid as you possibly can. Okay, so that's going to wrap up today's video. I uh, hope you learned something. I, I appreciate you watching today's video. Until next time, take care. We'll see you again.